Hey everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Here at Truck King we are dedicated to bringing you the most comprehensive pickup truck reviews anywhere on YouTube and today we've got an exciting one. That is the 2020 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. The Tundra has gone quite a while without a significant update leading a big group of people to say well it's old and outdated but there's also the crew that says it is tried and true and we are here today to try to figure out which one is the truth. So in this video, we're going to put the Tundra through our whole battery of tests. We're going to load it up with payload, we're going to hook up a 7,000 pound trailer, and then because this is a TRD Pro, you know we're going off-road. We're going to go up the hydro line trail, find the deepest mud that we can, and then we're going to go to my favorite local wide open trail so I can really get some speed, have my own little personal Baja 500. I'm real excited for this one, guys. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. The TRD Pro lineup from Toyota represents the best off-road vehicles that the brand has to offer, and you can add the package to the Sequoia, 4Runner, Tacoma, and the Tundra. Aside from some small differences, each one of these vehicles gets the same upgrades, including TRD tuned springs paired with Fox shocks, a skid plate up front, rigid industries fog lamps, leather trim seats, and a set of BBS forged aluminum wheels. Pricing for the Tundra TRD Pro begins at $48,655 in the United States, while in Canada, this Tundra starts at $64,800. Oh, and how could I forget to mention the TRD Performance Tuned Exhaust? Take a listen for yourself. Let's go on a walk around now, starting with the engine. So this is the 5.7 liter V8, making 381 horsepower and 401 pound-feet of torque. Those numbers are still competitive. Where this engine starts to kind of fall down is with its transmission. This is still just a 6-speed when everyone else in the industry has moved to 8 and 10 speeds. Now the other thing you need to know about this powertrain, it uses a 430 rear end axle ratio, so you're really getting some crazy torque down to the ground. These wheels are all about being lightweight. The TRD Pro is the only model that gets them, and they're only about three and a half pounds lighter than a standard Tundra wheel, but you know what, any of that unsprung weight you can remove absolutely helps, and that's what these are all about. Now keep on moving back, I'll tell you that this color is called Army Green. This is the unique TRD Pro color for 2020, and I do love that every single year Toyota releases a new, cool, unique color. For 2021, Toyota has rolled out Lunar Rock. I'll show it to you right here. And now I want you guys to go in the comments below and let me know what's your favorite TRD Pro color. There's been a bunch of them. Here's a quick refresher. My personal favorite is Cavalry Blue, but I want to hear from you guys. What's your favorite TRD Pro color? Around back here, the first thing you need to know is there is also a set of Fox piggyback reservoir shocks underneath and specially tuned leaf springs to make sure this Tundra is going to handle off-roading. Now let's take a look at the bed. There is a damp tailgate here, but that's kind of it for the Tundra's party tricks back here in the bed. You do have these cleats up here, which are movable. Uh, I do appreciate that system. But then besides that, you just get four hooks, one in each corner, and uh, no even bed lighting here. This is, I think, one of the areas where the Tundra is showing its age. You should at least have a couple of LEDs back here to light up your bed. Everyone has that now, but Toyota still does not. Okay guys, that's it for the walk around. Now I wanna go do the payload test. And because this is an off-road truck, there is an interesting story with the payload. Let me tell you about it. So let's take a peek here at the door jam sticker. So you guys can see the number two. Payload on this Tundra, 1,112 pounds. That's a really low number for a half ton pickup. And that's just because we have the off-road tuned suspension here. So normally in the bed back here, we load up two of those barrels. They're 500 pounds each for a total of 1,000. 
But if we do that, we're going to be way overloading the truck once my dad and I are inside. Heck, even with just me in there, we'd be overloading it. So uh, because this Tundra doesn't have a big payload number, we're only doing 500 pounds. But hey, let's get the tractor loaded up and see what happens. I just told you we were only going to load one barrel, so why did we load two? Well, that's because I want to do an apples to apples squat comparison of every truck that rolls in here. So we're going to load up the thousand pounds, we push both of those barrels as far forward in the bed as we can get them, and then we measure the squat. So we're doing the same for the TRD Pro, but before we hit the road, we're going to peel one of those barrels out of there to make sure we're not overweight. Okay, barrels are loaded up back there and we're loaded up up here which means like I said we're basically right at max payload for this Tundra. What I feel right now with the 500 pounds in the back and us in here is I can feel the squat. So that floatiness that I get normally particularly at speed I'm missing that right now. I don't know how close we are to the bump stops but my butt tells me we're fairly close. So I think that the point of the story here is that that 1100 pounds, that's a true number. This is not the kind of truck you want to buy and, and know you're going to overload it. Uh, and that's super important because it's a pickup truck. You might still be buying and thinking, oh, I'm going to have fun on the weekend and then do some work during the week. But when you go with something like the TRD Pro, you really can't do that. We're back in from the payload run. Barrels are unloaded. Now we can measure the squat. So we go center of the tire up to the bottom and we come out with Wow, really close. 39 and 5 eighths, I would say, which means that this truck was squatting with a thousand pounds in it, three inches and one sixteenth. Now that we have tested our second truck in our comprehensive Truck King test, we can show you the squat leaderboard. And of course, as more trucks roll through here, we will keep on updating that so you guys can see apples to apples with the thousand pounds in the bed, which one of these trucks is squatting the most. Okay, payload is done. Now it's time to hook up our trailer and do the towing test. And first of all, let's look at what the Tundra has for cameras. And this is definitely somewhere where this truck just lacks in comparison to the competition. That's the only camera view you get. I can't zoom in on the hitch ball. I can't look down the sides of the truck. There are just so many views out there from the competitors. And actually what's more frustrating is there are a ton of Toyota products that have better camera systems than this. There are Lexus products with better cameras, but of course the Tundra hasn't been updated so it has not received any of that new technology. So again, sure, this is enough. I can hook up my trailer just using this camera. But when you look at what else is available out there, the Toyota definitely is lacking. Crank her down. And just for the record, this is the identical trailer we used for the GMC. The concrete has not moved. We're going to do our best to keep it that way so every truck is throwing the same trailer with the same amount of tongue weight, making sure it's all clean apples to apples. And yeah, let's look at the attitude back here. She's definitely squatting in the rear end. I will remind you now that this truck is rated to tow 9,200 pounds. That's a respectable number for an off-road pickup truck, but we're gonna have to see how it actually feels out there on the road. And just before we take off, we gotta talk about this. This is a unique feature on the Tundra. No other pickup truck on the market does this. I guess if you do have some really long lumber or something, you could put it in there. I don't really like that for hauling stuff. I don't know, Pops, what do you think about the window back there? You like being able to open it? Does it matter to you? I think it's one of those things, for me, it's like kind of like a sunroof. Either you love them or you don't. I, I've had sunroofs in so many trucks, I've never opened a one. Maybe you, it's because I'm bald. I never think to open that window back there either. Yeah, I, would, I just wouldn't think of it. Some people swear by it. What do you guys think? This is another debate I want to hear about in the comments. You happy with the Tundra's rear sliding window or not? And there's a little teaser, everybody. Yes, I got a pair of Wave Runners over there on that trailer. And those videos are coming up real soon on the channel, so don't go anywhere. For now, though, 
we're focused on this Tundra and how it's going to tow our 7,000 pound trailer. And uh, let's pull out of the yard and see how it does. Okay, zero to 60 run with 7,000 pounds. Let's hit it. Okay, a little rubber off the line, but not bad. Come on, Tundra, she sounds good. This Tundra just pulled 0 to 100 in 16.4 seconds. Now, of course, you're wondering, well, how does that stack up? Well, now here is the leaderboard. Time for the towing test to commence, which means we got to reset the fuel economy. Now, you can see the average there, 17.6. That's pretty well what we've been getting. On the highway, I got the average down closer to 16, but in this Tundra, 16 to 17 is not out of the question at all in everyday driving. Now we've got the 7,000 pounds on the back, we're zeroed out, we're gonna go do two loops and we'll see what the fuel economy is at the end. Now we're into our loops, and first of all, let me remind you guys that this towing test, we're gonna do two loops, and our loops consist of gravel roads and then a paved highway. It's pretty twisty, windy, quite a few elevation changes, so it gives us a really nice cross-section of roads to get a feel for this. And right now, we're in these twisty, windy gravel sections, and, and it brings up one of the biggest issues with this Tundra, and again, it is the fact that the rear end is squatting, because I can tell you that when I'm going through these corners, the front end feels light. I can feel my front end's a little bit taller than it should be, and the steering is just a little sketchy. It's not to the point where it's absolutely scary, but uh, that trailer is definitely really affecting this truck. Now, the last time this truck was updated, at least there were meaningful updates, right? So that was 2018, I believe. We got a much bigger fuel tank and we got an integrated trailer brake controller. So at least Tundra kind of kept up. But again, that was two years ago, guys. In this hyper-competitive truck market, you got to do more. At least that's my feeling. Uh, now, Toyota is supposed to come out with the Tundra in 2022. So we'll probably see it next year. It won't be here until 2022 model year. Um, and I guess, Dad, I'll put the question to you. Am I complaining about this thing being old just because I know it's old? Or do you think it's starting to show its age? And then two-parter, what does this truck got to do in 2022 to really be competitive or really blow you away? What does Toyota got to do to impress you? When, when you get old, you're, you're happy with things that work and things that last. So Toyota's got that beat. But when it comes to simple thing like that transmission and the fuel economy that's coming out of this V8, sorry, Toyota. Sure, you're tried and true, but you're costing me because everybody else is doing better and that's where you need to catch up. I mean, I just want to see a great improvement to the powertrain. I'm not that crazy about all the other bells and whistles, but powertrain, more gears in that transmission, figure out a way to get this 5.7 to give us better fuel economy. And for that matter, hey, what about a diesel? Come on, everybody else is doing it. How many diesels have you got in the rest of the world? Mm, all right? Tons. Yeah, tons of platforms. So, get it done. Yeah. So, we've had reports of Toyota diesels coming for years. Personally, and I don't have insider info, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I don't see it. Toyota Tundra Hybrid. That makes the most sense in the world to me. Toyota is still the company that owns the word hybrid. Everyone thinks of Toyota and hybrids. I think that's where they got to go with this thing. And especially now that the rest of the market's going that way, it makes sense. But all of that remains to be seen. Okay, we're back in the yard now, and fuel economy total, boom. 20.3 liters per 100 kilometers. So with the trailer, you're basically adding, you know, almost four liters per 100. And uh, for all of you US folks, I can switch over the unit for you right now, if I can figure it out here. 
Uh, meter settings, maybe. There we go. Units. MPG. Oh, it even has MPG Imperial. That's interesting. Not a lot of vehicles have that. So, MPG. 11.6 MPG. This Tundra is thirsty. Whoop. 11.5. Because we're idling. <laughs> Okay, everybody, off-road time here in the Tundra, and let me talk to you about this high-speed trail before we go do the Muddy Hydra line. Now, I'm really pushing her here. Oh, yes, Tundra. So here we are in these open fields, and there's some big potholes out here, but I'm hitting them at 60 kilometers an hour. I'm plowing through here at 60 right now, and the suspension just swallows everything up. Oh, here's some big ones. <laughs> Absolutely swallows it up. I'm still at 60. Running at 60. <laughs> so I'm hitting this stuff with some serious speed that in a stock pickup truck you wouldn't dare do because it would just beat the heck out of you. But here in this Tundra, man, you can really build up your speed. <laughs> the thing I really like about this TRD Pro is the steering. The steering in these Toyotas always to me seems a little bit heavier than some of the competitors, a little bit more direct. And for such a big vehicle when you're hustling it fast, like I am right now, you want to have that tight steering feel. Uh, it really helps to kind of make a big vehicle drive a little bit smaller. This is one of the areas where this TRD Pro excels, is high speed off-roading. And this is a whole different thing to what some of the other off-road trucks on the market do. The TRD Pro is a high speed off-road package, just like the Ford Raptor. It's meant for hitting massive potholes at 60 kilometers an hour. Whereas trucks like the Nissan Titan Pro 4X, the Ram Rebel, those are much more sort of slow speed crawling focus, much stiffer suspension than this truck, which like I said, is really meant to be nice and soft and just swallow up everything underneath you, trophy truck style. Now we're here on the Hydra line, ready to find the mud. And this is actually a rematch for this Tundra. So I brought it up here for TFL Off-Road and it didn't make it all the way down. Although that was more the trail's fault than the truck's fault. And let's get rolling here. Now, the issue is that the ruts in our deepest mud section were just getting so deep. And every truck I brought up was scraping. The bumpers were just not clearing. You can kind of see the clip right here, but uh, the Tundra, the bumper was just absolutely scraping. It was not good to make it through there whatsoever but we fixed it when i ran the ranger up we went up there and we totally dug the rocks out we graded it with the tractor so the ruts are different now and i'm excited to see how the tundra does now we're here there's quite a bit of water up here we're going to see how the truck does we have her in four wheel drive high and i've gone ahead and defeated the traction control system so we should get some wheel spin now of course one of the big sort of drawbacks of the Tundra is there's no real locker back there it's an auto LSD that's what Toyota calls it it uses brake based traction control to actually send power but it's not a real locker and that might get in the way a bit we'll see how much these wheels spin and here we go now a reminder these are Michelin LTX AT2 tires and okay they're biting they're biting oh my goodness yes tundra this stuff is getting soft up here please go yes please go oh it's soft <laughs> i was getting sideways coming out there i was getting sideways but she made it we've been talking in this video about the gearing about the 430 rear end i keep bringing it up and you have to bring it up off-road too because it gives you amazing torque down low all this power that you want and you just feel like the tundra's power is all available right away and then the drawback though is is throttle modulation it's keeping things extremely smooth here in the tundra especially when what happened there at the end is i was coming up out of that pit i was feeling a little sketchy about it it felt like it might have been digging in so i laid into the throttle probably more than i should have and it started getting a little bit squirrely uh, so as i came up and out of there i was a little bit sideways it worked out fine it felt a little bit sketchy so that's definitely something i noticed there now we've turned around coming back we're on this rough section and guys i cannot say enough for the suspension here in this tundra i'm not sure this is specifically really a mud truck i don't think this is really the truck you want to buy for uh mudding rock crawling stuff like that but man if you want to get any type of speed 
off-road and have your truck you know insulate you and uh, keep you comfortable this tundra is it man it does such a nice job okay we're going back into the pit i think we know it's all going to work out good so uh, let's hit it maybe even with a little more speed oh drop it in there we had some bad departure angle and that is easily the worst part of this truck 17 degree departure and i whapped the hitch on something but once i'm in <laughs> yes the Tundra just powers through there. Nicely done. Okay, now we're sending the Tundra into our offset ruts here to see what happens with the locker. So now, you're gonna see this rear passenger is gonna lift. It's about to get no traction. Let's see what happens. look at all that spin you see so this truck it literally just took all that spinning for the other wheel to find the tiniest bit of traction and go for it there it is again now he's built up a tiny bit of momentum but you could really see the difference there we tested the Sierra last week with the G80 and when it started spinning it just goes clunk locked into place the Tundra here just kept spinning and spinning and spinning until one of the tires found traction and that was the tire still on the ground but you can see right there the lack of a locker in a real hardcore situation is definitely gonna hurt this tundra well everybody after putting the tundra through all of those tests i think we have a pretty clear verdict this truck absolutely is compromised for its goal and that goal is going fast off-road the suspension here once you put payload in the back or a trailer on the back it just squats down quite a bit and it, it comes across from the driver's seat as not being a totally confident truck but the trade-off of course is that you can go 60 kilometers an hour over the roughest rutted out trails and this truck feels super composed and confident and keeps you comfortable Plus, when you go bury it in the mud, it's not half bad. Now, for 2022, we have a long list of changes we are hoping to see because this truck that sits here today, it's pretty good. But we know that a brand new Tundra could be so much better. So stay tuned because hopefully we'll have news from Toyota sometime soon. So everybody, that is it for this video. Why don't you go below, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of the 2020 Tundra. Let me know what you think of this video and what you'd like to see in the future. While you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit that subscribe button, and then come right back here to the Truck King YouTube channel to find out what we're testing next. See ya. What else? Those are very good points. Anything to add? It's a nice day. <laughs> it is a nice day.